Driving for rides here is a dangerous way to earn a side hustle. We don't hesitate to tell you that. Whether driving for Uber or Lyft, there is a hell of a lot of inherent dangers us drivers face. Nevertheless, there are a host of things you can do to limit the chance of you as a driver having an awful outcome. Unfortunately, in this case, this driver did just the opposite, and it led to a serious consequence. What up, folks? Once again, it is indeed your boy Tim with another ride-sharing video. Just to make this one clear, if you are a bit squeamish on the sight of blood, this may not be the video for you. Viewer discretion is advised. This driver made a few key errors and had a very, very bad outcome. Comes from a story titled, Teens Assault Attempt to Rob Uber Driver at Gunpoint While Filming Attack. As bad as it sounds, a bunch of teenagers attempted to rob an Uber driver while they were actually filming it. But we're going to give you the gist of it because I think once you hear the story, it's pretty clear the driver avoided some clear red flags and may have sparked his own attack. A group of teens attacked an Uber driver while filming him, breaking his nose and gashing his head. So when we talk about a broken nose, big ass gash on the head, this is what I'm talking about. There is a blood warning in this particular video. You'll see a graphic image of this individual and yeah, there's a lot of blood involved in it. He did take a really bad beating. Now the story suggests that the individuals that provided that beating were between the ages of 11 and 17 years old. 11 and 17 years old. So he got beaten by more than one individual and they apparently all were minors. Here's how it started. The driver had arrived on Alabama Avenue in East Flatbush to pick up a female fare named Precious around 7 p.m. Sunday and noticed a group of teens across the street, he said. He asked if any of them knew his fare and they said no, he recalled. Now, so far it sounds like a normal story. The driver arrives to the address and ask a bunch of teenagers that are outside, do any of you know Precious? That sounds like the name of the person he was picking up. And the teenagers just said no. So how the hell does this story with a bunch of teenagers telling them, no, we don't know who you're looking for, go from a simple question, interaction, to sheer violence? That's the point we're trying to make. Continuing on though, when he turned his head to look for his client, he was suddenly punched in the face through his open window. I didn't see them. A surprise punch, he said. Does this make any damn sense at all? You show up to pick up a passenger. The passenger's not there or whatever the case may be. You ask a few teenagers that's hanging out, do they know who this person is? They say no. And suddenly they're beating your ass. I'm going to tell you right off the bat, in my humble opinion, this driver did a hell of a lot more than he is letting on in this story. Even in the worst neighborhoods, growing up on the south side of Chicago myself, north side of Chicago myself, I've been in, you know, lived in Dallas, Oak Cliff area. People don't just beat your ass for no damn reason at all in terms of what this sounds like is a multiple people were beating this driver up. Simply for asking, do you know where Precious is? There's more to this story. And there's no way in hell I'm going to believe he asked them, do you know this person? And they just started beating him up. But we'll continue on and you'll see exactly why I have that opinion. He got out of his car. Now, this is when he said a surprise punch. He got out of his car to fight back and noticed that one of them was filming, said the victim. At that point, a brawl broke out and he ended up on the ground where one of the punks hit him in the head with the scooter. Don't get out of your damn car. So right off the bat, he claims he asked them that they know where this person was. They said no and somehow just started beating the hell out of him. And then he got out of his vehicle. You know, you ever see the Geico commercial? Why can't we just get in the running car and they choose to do some dumb shit? Why would you get out of your car to take a to take on a bunch of juveniles? Right off the bat, I'm going to tell you there's a racial component to this. The victim is white. The assailants are black. Folks, you got to think 
you got to choose your battles. Even if he had to get out of the car and beat the hell out of his assailants, what is the newspaper going to read the next day? White guy beats up a bunch of black juveniles. Why would you get out of your damn car to fight a bunch of folks that are between the ages of 11 and 17 years of age? This is this is definitely a situation where you cannot win. Either they're going to beat you up because they got numbers, or you win the fight and you come out looking like a damn racist. And that's not to say this guy is racist at all. He has a right to defend himself. But some of the times you got to pick your battles and getting out of the vehicle to get in a fight with a bunch of minors is about as dumb as you can get. Nevertheless, continuing on with the story, as he waited for an ambulance, two of the kids returned looking for the phone, the driver said. Now listen to this. He's still at the damn scene waiting for an ambulance. Two of the people that beat his ass and returned looking for a phone. Here's why I stated this driver is not telling you everything in regards to this story. When those kids came back, here's what he yelled out. The party's over. The police are coming, the driver yelled, sending them scurrying. I don't know if they intended to rob me or if it was just to make a TikTok video. Why the hell would you still be on the scene? Why the fuck would you be yelling out shit at the people who just whooped your ass? When you don't have the police on scene, you don't have ambulances, or an ambulance, you're sitting there bleeding, and I'm going to show you the photo right after us, which he's bleeding pretty damn well. Why would you yell some more shit out at these folks? This guy was taunting these teens. He leaves that out of the story. When he goes from asking them, do they know where his fare is, to they're suddenly beating him, he's leaving out some shit in the middle. They're beating his ass, most likely, because either they said something smart to him, and he said something smart back, or he just said something to them that was out of pocket. One way or another, there was some words exchanged before these kids just started beating the hell out of him, and he's leaving that out, because it probably would remove some of the sympathy that folks would have for him. If it came out that he was taunting a bunch of minors, you know, go on, y'all ass need to go get a job or I can't see why you're wasting your life. Something dumb that led to this. You guys let me know in the comments if you think I'm wrong and you believe a bunch of 11 to 17 year olds in the hood. I'm not going to deny kids in the hood do some dumb shit, but they don't just start beating up a grown man for no damn reason at all. I, I just don't buy it. Certainly when you see the guy getting out of the car to quote unquote fight back, everything about that sounds wrong. Nevertheless, like I said, if blood is an issue, this is the time to turn away. This guy did suffer a broken nose and a big gash on his head. You hear him say he was hit with a scooter. Here it goes. See his face there covered in blood, most likely from that big ass gash on the top of his head. That gash on the top of his head required six staples. So whoever hit him at the top of his head really clocked him hard, put a big-ass gash on the top of his head. Nevertheless, folks, there are a few lessons to be learned from this video, which is one reason why we're presenting it here on the channel. That's generally the goal of keeping our ear to the ground and giving you the ongoings of rideshare drivers. There's a lot of shit you can learn it. Apparently, somebody like this guy does not seem to know. Number one. Stick to the damn job. Don't start or get involved in drama when going to pick up somebody. And like I stated, there's no way I'm going to believe these kids just started beating him up. He was either taunting them or getting involved with they were, maybe they were shooting dice in the street. You know, these folks do all kinds of shit in the hood. That ain't none of your business. You are there to pick up Precious. You wait till Precious comes to your vehicle. Give her five to seven minutes, whatever the app requires. Drive off, collect your cancellation fee. If you see some shit going on in the neighborhood that you don't feel safe or come, drive off. Your car is a weapon if you really are threatened. Why get out of the car to get involved in a fight with a bunch of people? Just everything about his actions showed that he was not a 100% victim. He was in on a brawl. You hear the story even say a brawl broke out. Yeah, because you got out of the car to fight. Next, keep windows and doors locked when parked. I cannot tell you how many stories we've covered of drivers simply parking at a, 
Uh, 7-Eleven, a guy got killed out in California. We covered Chicago. There's been a few of them. Whenever you're parked in your vehicle, your door should be locked so someone cannot just come up and grab your door and open it. And in this case, being punched through the window, either have your windows up entirely, crack them a little bit, something of that nature. Maybe if you let all four windows down in your sedan or whatever the case may be, a few inches. But no one should be able to reach through your whole damn window and punch you in the face. I just think that this, we've covered so much shit at this point. That's a lesson I cannot give uh, too much of, is that you should have your windows and doors locked. A lot of Uber and Lyft drivers have had a bad outcome simply because somebody walked up and opened up their door. So keep your windows and doors locked. That would have prevented that. that but if you're going to be taunting folks and talking shit, you need your window down so you can be yelling at them. And that's likely what happened here. Last, you know, before we conclude, never, and I don't know how we can say this, whether you're an Uber driver or a regular citizen on the road, whatever the case may be, never, ever get out of your damn car to go confront somebody about a beef. Damn it, this is America. Everybody you encounter could be carrying a pistol. In the hood, multiply that by a few people. And when I'm talking about pistols, I'm talking about irresponsible gun owners. There's no reason ever where it makes sense to get out of your vehicle when you actually have the option to drive off. So as he stated, I'm getting out of my vehicle to defend myself. Dumb as fuck. And you see what happened to him. Last but not least, we say it in every video, anytime something happens to a driver, keep your defensive tools on you. What do we say? Mace or pepper spray, something to slice or poke wood up to including up to and including the firearm. But in this case, in my humble opinion, if this driver had got out of his vehicle, ended up in a fight with these juveniles and used a defensive tool on them other than mace or pepper spray, he would probably be in jail because he is the adult. They are allegedly the juveniles. He had the option to drive off and chose to get in a fight with a bunch of kids. Not taken away from the fact that these kids were probably delinquents, maybe even criminals. Not Certainly the one hitting them in the head with a scooter. Not taken away from the fact that they were some badass kids. But as an adult who was within the safety of his car, just drive off. Cardinal mistake. Cost him six staples to the head. I don't know what else to say about this story, folks, other than this one was avoidable. We talked about the story yesterday that many believe had a racial component to it where a white guy thought he was being scammed, an elderly man, 81 years old, and he shot a 61-year-old black female Uber driver to death. Many folks believe that that had a racial component to it. This story here most likely has one in reverse. White dude come to the hood talking shit to a bunch of black kids, gets out of the car to defend himself, and the whole block lights his ass up. Him being white in that situation probably did not work for him very well at all either, but last, there's nothing worse than how damn dumb he was. Nevertheless, folks, don't make these same mistakes. As always, it's your boy Tim. Feel free to tap that like button, subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.